This is the story of the steadfast tin soldier, written by Hans Christian Andersen. Once upon a time, there were 25 tin soldiers. They were all brothers because they were made from the same old tin spoon. They held rifles on their shoulders, and their faces looked straight ahead above their lovely red and blue uniforms. The very first thing they heard in this world when the lid was taken off the box was, Ten soldiers! shouted by a little boy clapping his hands. He had gotten them because it was his birthday, and he lined them up on the table. They all looked exactly the same. Just one was a little different. He had only one leg. Since he was made last and there wasn't enough tin left, but he stood just as steadily on his one leg as the others did on two. And he's the one who turned out to be remarkable. On the table where they were lined up, there were lots of other toys, but what really caught the eye was a beautiful paper castle. You could look right into the rooms through the little windows. There were small trees outside around a little mirror that was supposed to be a lake. There were wax swans swimming there who were reflected in the glass. It was all just lovely. But the loveliest was a little maiden who stood in the middle of the castle door. She was cut out of paper too, but she had a skirt made of the clearest muslin and a narrow little blue ribbon over her shoulder, like a scarf. There was a shining sequin right in the middle of it, as large as her face. The little maiden had her arms stretched out because she was a dancer, and she had one leg lifted so high in the air that the tin soldier didn't see it, and so he thought that she had one leg just like him. That's the wife for me, he thought, but she's quite aristocratic. She lives in a palace, and I only have a box, and twenty-five of us live there. That's no place for her, but I must meet her and he stretched out to his full length behind a snuff box that was standing on the table. From there, he could gaze at the fine little lady who continued to stand on one leg without losing her balance. Later in the evening, all the other ten soldiers were put into their box, and the people in the house went to bed. That's when the toys started to play. They played house, fought wars, and went to balls. The tin soldiers rattled in their box because they wanted to play too, but they couldn't get the lid off. The nutcracker turned somersaults, and the slate pencil wrote 
noisy pranks on the blank blackboard. There was so much noise that the canary woke up and started to sing along and in rhyme at that. The only two who didn't move were the tin soldier and the little dancer. She held herself straight on tiptoe with both arms outstretched and he was just as firm on his one leg. He didn't take his eyes off her for a second. Then the clock struck 12 and plunk, the lid flew off the snuff box. But there was no tobacco in there. No, it was a little black troll. It was a jack-in-the-box. Tin soldier, the troll said, keep your eyes to yourself. But the tin soldier pretended not to hear. Just wait until tomorrow, the troll said. When morning came and the children came in, the tin soldier was set on the windowsill. Now, whether it was the troll or a draft, the window flew open right away, and the soldier fell out head first from the third floor. He fell terribly fast. His leg turned in the air, and he landed on his hat with his bayonet stuck in the cobblestones. The maid and the little boy went down right away to look for the tin soldier, but although they almost stepped on him, they didn't see him. If the tin soldier had shouted, Here I am! They surely would have found him, but he didn't think it was proper to shout when he was in uniform. Then it started to rain heavier and heavier, and it turned into a real downpour. When it was over, two street urchins came along. Look, one said, there's a tin soldier. He's going sailing. And they made a boat out of paper, set the tin soldier right in the middle of it, and he went sailing down the gutter while both boys ran alongside and clapped their hands. Good grief, what waves there were in that gutter, and what a current! Of course, it had been a downpour. The paper boat seesawed up and down, and in between it spun around so quickly that the soldier trembled, but he remained steadfast, didn't change his expression, looked straight ahead, and held his rifle on his shoulder. Suddenly, the boat sailed into a culvert. It was just as dark as it was in his box. I wonder where I'm going, he thought. Well, it's the troll's fault. If only the little maiden were sitting here in the boat too, it could be twice as dark. Just then, a big water rat that lived in the culvert came along. 
Do you have a passport? Asked the rat. Give me your passport. But the tin soldier kept still and held his rifle even tighter. The boat kept moving with the rat following after. Hook, how he ground his teeth and screamed to sticks and straw. Stop him, stop him, he hasn't paid his toll. And he didn't show his passport. The current became stronger and faster. The tin soldier could already see the light where the culvert ended. But he also heard a roaring sound that was enough to frighten a brave man. Just imagine, right past the culvert, the gutter flowed into a big canal. That would be just as dangerous for him as going over a high waterfall would be for us. He was too close to it, and it was impossible to stop. The boat rushed out, and the poor tin soldier held himself as erect as possible. No one should be able to say that he so much as blinked. The boat whirled around three or four times and filled with water up to the rim so that it had to sink. The tin soldier was up to his neck in water and the boat sank deeper and deeper while the paper dissolved more and more. Then the water went over the soldier's head and he thought about the beautiful little dancer whom he would never see again. And he heard in his ears, Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. Then the paper fell apart, and the tin soldier fell through. But right away, he was swallowed by a big fish. Oh, how Dark it was in there. It was even worse than in the culvert. And it was so cramped. But the tin soldier was steadfast and lay stretched out with his rifle on his shoulder. The fish swam around and made the most horrendous movements. Finally, the fish stopped moving, and then it was as, as if a bolt of lightning went through it. A light was shining brightly, and a voice called out, Tin soldier! The fish had been caught brought to market, and sold, and came into a kitchen, where the kitchen maid cut it open with a big knife. She took the tin soldier around the waist between two fingers and carried it into the living room, where everyone wanted to see the remarkable man who had traveled around in the stomach of a fish. But the tin soldier certainly wasn't proud of it. They set him up on the table, and there, well, will wonders never cease. 
the tin soldier was back in the very same living room where he'd been before. He saw the same children and the toys were standing on the table. There was the lovely castle with the beautiful little dancer who was still standing on one leg and had the other high in the air. She was steadfast too. The tin soldier was so moved that he almost cried tears of tin. But that wouldn't be proper. He looked at her and she looked at him. But they didn't say anything. Then one of the little boys grabbed the tin soldier and threw it into the stove without any reason. But it was certainly the little troll in the snuff box who was behind it. The tin soldier stood there quite illuminated and felt a terrible heat. But whether it was from the actual fire or from love, he didn't know. The colors on his uniform had faded completely away, whether from the trip or from sorrow. No one could say. He looked at the little maiden and she looked at him and he felt himself melting. But still, he stood steadfastly with his rifle on his shoulder. Then a door was opened. The wind caught the little dancer and she flew like a sif into the oven to the tin soldier, flared up in flames and was gone. Then the tin soldier melted into a blob and the next day when the maid took out the ashes, she found him as a little tin heart. But the only thing left of the dancer was the sequin, and that was burned to a crisp. That was the story of the steadfast tin soldier. Hector the Hermit Crab Written by T. Albert with illustrations by maillustrations.com As Hector the Hermit Crab crawled along the sandy shallows of the lagoon, he noticed a strange shadow from across the small hills and valleys of the sand. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. What a great catch, Larry yelled to the others in the boat. We now have over 100 hermit crabs, 50 starfish, and who knows how many snails to sell to the pet shop. Let's go and deliver our precious cargo. About one week later, Tammy and Jimmy were shopping with their mom at a new plaza that had just opened in their town. It was a nice plaza and built just across the street from a small beach, a lagoon, and the big, blue, beautiful ocean. ocean. They liked to shop with their mom, but 
Today was different. All of the stores were new, and their mom was shopping for a special gift and had told them that they couldn't buy anything. They weren't bored, but they were definitely not happy. Jimmy mumbled as they walked. Another shoe store. Oh, look, more dresses, pots and pans, just what I need. Jimmy, Tammy said, it's hard enough as it is without listening to you complain. I don't like being here any more than you, but you don't hear me grumbling. What are you doing now? Jimmy asked. Their mom smiled and just kept on walking through the maze of stores. We're almost there, she said. Almost where? asked Tammy. Almost at another shoe store, blurted Jimmy. Actually, their mom said, I was thinking of the new pet shop. It's supposed to be the best in the area. It has a giant aquarium with all kinds of fish, even a shark. There are birds, dogs, cats, lizards, and more. It's almost like a zoo. I thought you two could spend some time there while I got that special gift. Well, this changed everything. Tammy and Jimmy were now excited and couldn't wait to get to the pet shop. As they went around the next corner, there it was, a huge door with a giant sign, the amazing animal emporium. As they walked through the door, they couldn't believe their eyes. There, right in the middle of the store, was an aquarium that was bigger than any swimming pool they had ever seen. They walked around and peered into the water and saw all sorts of creatures. Look at all the clownfish, Tammy said. Well, they better swim fast. Look at that shark, Jimmy replied. Oh, they were amazed. They seemed to be every type of fish and sea creature right in the middle of the store. This truly was an amazing pet shop. Let's see what else is here, yelled Jimmy as he walked off to explore. They were amazed at the animals that were for sale and each type of animal had its own room. The door with the sign Slithers had all sorts of snakes. The pond had frogs, toads, and giant dragonflies. Arachnaland had spiders. And chirps had hundreds of different birds. There were rooms for cats, dogs, hogs, and more. I wonder what's in little critters, Tammy said. There's only one way to find out, Jimmy replied, as they walked in together. As they looked at all the small and sometimes unusual animals, they were amazed that people had these as pets. There were mice, chipmunks, moles, starfish, 
snails, clams, beetles, and all things small. Look at this, squealed Tammy. A hermit crab. Cool, replied Jimmy. Although the crab didn't do much, they watched with fascination as it crawled over the sand and rocks. Once in a while, it would start to come out of its shell and then quickly pop back in and cover its face with its giant claw. He's looking for a new and bigger shell for his home, said their mom. I'm glad I was able to find you two. This place is big. Tammy looked at the crab and said, Bye, Hector. We'll miss you. Jimmy waved to him and turned to walk away. As the three were leaving, they heard a tapping on the glass. I don't believe this, said their mom. That crab is saying goodbye to you two. I guess we'll just have to buy him and have a new pet. Now the fun began. They had the salesperson get Hector, since Tammy already named him, and put him into a box. Then they bought him a new cage, hermit crab bedding, several shells, a swimming pool water dish, special food, some rocks, and everything Hector needed to be at home, in their home. Tammy and Jimmy took excellent care of Hector, and their mom was happy to see that they were so responsible with their little friend. But as time passed, Hector seemed to be less and less happy. After all, no matter how nice his human friends were, he didn't have any friends of his own kind. Hector missed his family and the open spaces of the lagoon that he was accustomed to. One morning, Jimmy and Tammy decided that although Hector was a good pet, he deserved things they couldn't give him. Mom, Tammy asked from across the room, can we let Hector go? Don't you like him anymore? She inquired. Of course we do, said Jimmy, but he isn't happy here and setting him free would be the best for him. Hmm, their mom thought. Tammy and Jimmy are very unselfish and very smart. I am so proud of them. Later that day, their mom took Tammy, Jimmy, Hector, and all of Hector's things to the lagoon across from the plaza. Tammy carefully took Hector from his cage and placed him in the sand next to the shallows. Jimmy put his swimming pool and rocks in the sand, and their mom placed his food dish securely between two rocks. As they left with the empty cage, they thought they heard a faint tapping on a rock. They turned to see Hector and several other hermit crabs slowly crawling into the shallows. And we learn that a true act of love is ensuring that everyone is happy, even Hector the hermit crab. 
I hope you enjoyed this story.